Don't you guys remember when we actually got good remakes? Platinum, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, or as all those remakes were just peak. And then now we get something like BDSP and then everything went to garbage. Before we talk about Pokemon's newest remakes and the issues surrounding those said remakes, we first need to talk about what they did right beforehand and how we can fix this entire mess. Now there's multiple opinions on which remake is truly the best Pokemon remake, but in my opinion there's one that stands out above the rest, and that is Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon. Hello friends, my name is Pokey, and in today's video we're going to be talking about where remakes went wrong and how to return them to their former glory by using none other than in my opinion the best Pokemon remake there has ever been Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon. Now I definitely can see this as a hot take among the Pokemon community and I might get flamed for this but hear me out, hear me out. Let me explain as to why I think this but before we do let's talk about BDSP and what garbage they were cooking. Now there's multiple reasons as to why BDSP failed but let's talk about the first and probably the biggest one. Bugs. So many bugs. I cannot express to you as to how many bugs were in this game. First and foremost, everyone released a new dupe glitch like every other day. And not only that, people were able to enter events like the Shaman event that was supposed to come a month later than anticipated, but people were able to get to the island and get Shaman via a glitch in the game. Not only that, people were able to go to the island where Darkrai was. Like, bro, what? For those of you who don't know, Ilka is a completely separate company to Game Freak, and they were the ones who mainly worked on BDSP. Game Freak were more like a supporting team. And let me tell you, Ilka fumbled. And it's not like Ilka patched the bug as soon as it came out. No, it took them several days, if not an entire week, to patch one dupe bug. And not only that, the next dupe bugs that came after that took them weeks. And I know when Ilka saw people get Shaman, they were fuming. Now I get it. Some dupe glitches, like, like it might be fun to use and everything, but let's be honest. It hurts the game more than it helps it. Like, I get it. It's fun to have a bunch of Master Balls just in your bag or a bunch of rare candies in your bag. But like, let's be honest, man. Why would you want to sacrifice your future fun to get Shaman or Darkrai early? and not being able to just, you know, wait and just enjoy it once it comes out, because that's pretty much the fun of it. The anticipation and the adrenaline that comes with it, and then finally being able to do it, that's the fun of it. But people literally were so impatient and just did the bug, which I'm not blaming, right? I'm not saying that like, yo, you guys are the ones that ruined the game, because you didn't. You were just doing what you wanted to do. It's Uka's fault. The worst part about it is that the more dupe glitches that people found and the more patches that came out just resulted in more dupe glitches. They would be patching one dupe bug, but then another dupe bug would come later in that next patch. And then after that patch, there would be another dupe bug. And each dupe bug was similar to the last dupe bug. So it, it, it was just a mess. Now I can go on and on about the bugs and glitches in the game, but you guys get the point already. Let's just move on to the next point. I feel like another big issue surrounding BDSP is that the events were completely identical to how they were in the original Diamond and Pearl games. And not just the events, the entire story was literally just a play-by-play -play with just new graphics. And don't give me the nostalgia crap because I know full well that the people that say that are the same people that like Orez, and Orez isn't just a nostalgia fest. It's a genuine, real good game without the need of being an identical replica of its predecessor. Orez goes to show that you can still retain the old while introducing the new. Oh no, they didn't just stop with Megas after X and Y. They brought him back for round two in Orez. Not only that, but we got great cutscenes and the Delta episode in Orez. It wasn't just the same game. It felt like you were playing a completely different game, but it still had that nostalgia that you were wanting for. I'm not mad that BDSP had chibi forms. No, that's not what I'm mad at. I'm mad that the fact that they had zero cutscenes and all of the important moments, even at the end of the game when you're facing Cyrus down at the peak with Dialga, he's just walking to you in that chibi state. No, they couldn't just have made a cutscene and then have the actual 3D model with him like tall as hell. No, they just gave you the chibi forms and this wasn't even a cutscene, it was still part of the game. The whole save the world trope was garbage here. Like you didn't feel any epicness while facing down Arceus, you were probably just laughing at the fact he's just mad at you with that chibi face of his. Not only that, but the only new mechanic they actually added into the game was the dig site thing. 
and that had to be the most grueling and frustrating process of all time. To get the shards to get your favorite like legendary Pokemon was absolute hell. People were spending hours just to get one large shard, like bro, what? But now that I talked to you about all the bad in BDSB, I can finally talk to you guys about all the good in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and how they compare between each other. Now first and foremost, what Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon did right compared to BDSB was that they didn't just give you the old story back, no, they give you a completely original story, still retaining the original source material from the previous game, but just adding in a whole new ending. They changed the entire antagonist from Lusamine to Ultra Freaking Necrozma, and not only that, Mance was hardcore too. He was packing up the box legendary Sogaleo and Nunala, and not only that, they made you feel hopeless too. The entire Pony Island was clouded in darkness, and Mans was sending Ultra Beasts across the entirety of the freaking region. The fact you saw him open up wormholes like it was nothing made you feel like he was an actual threat. It wasn't like BDSP where Cyrus screamed for the 10th time about how he was going to destroy the world in his chibi form, which made it look all the more menacing. And not only that, but Dialga, because there were no cutscenes, Dialga just sparked once and it was over. You, you won. It was that simple and the story was wrapped up that quickly. They made it seem like the Krozma was an actual bigger threat than Dialga was, even though Dialga is the creator of the entire multiverse alongside Giratina and Palkia. So why is it that you couldn't made a simple cutscene of showing how dire the situation was, even though in the Krozma, Game Freak was able to do that with merely one cutscene. Not only that, but unlike BDSP, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon gave us so many things to do. They improved drastically from their predecessor by adding Mantine Surfing so you could go back to Mele Mele Island without the need of Charizard. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon also allowed you to shiny hunt easier with the Ultra Wormhole. And not only that, unlike BDSP where you had to go through that entire process of getting the shards to get legendaries, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon made it so that as long as you have a very shiny looking portal, you can get legendary Pokemon really, really easy. And not only that, you can predict which legendaries you were gonna get by the color of the wormholes. So you can kind of pinpoint which legendaries you want. And listen, I'm not the one to like Pokemon minigames in a Pokemon game, but in this case, they gave me a good incentive to actually do these minigames, and they were kind of freaking fun. The Mantine surfing was fun, the Ultra Wormholes, if you actually changed the motion controls to the circle pad, I don't know what caused them to think that motion controls was a good idea, by the way. Don't know that. And all in all, it was kind of fun and actually required some skill, unlike BDSP, where it was just purely RNG based. Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon also introduced its very own gimmick, and not only that, it kept Megas. Granted, you couldn't use them until the end of the game, but they still had them, and I don't want you to bring up the excuse, oh, it's not a new region, they couldn't introduce a new gimmick, then why didn't they just give us Megas? Let's go, Pikachu did that, and that was a remake. There's no, there's no reason why they wouldn't include it here. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon goes to show that Oka could have made a good game if they wanted to, if it wasn't due to poor management decisions and also the rush state it was sent out in. It'd even be far-fetched to say that it was a DLC type of game because there was no content unless you're talking about the bugs it had. But anyways guys, that's the end of the video and I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe. And I don't want to make it seem like I'm mad at Oka, but I'm more so just disappointed in them. They could have made a really great game, and they just didn't. If they just took inspiration from some of the greatest remakes of all time, BDSB could have been much, much better executed. But anyways, that's enough of that, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for a thousand subscribers, it means a lot. I love you guys. Peace.